she was in bad shape. It was like picking up a doll. She weighed almost nothing. It was, you know, you expect a child of that size and her height and everything, you know, to weigh 50 pounds, 55, 60 pounds. She didn't. You, I picked her up and it was like picking up a rag doll. She didn't make an expression. She didn't smile. She didn't laugh. You know, all she did was stare at you and blink her eyes. It was like she wasn't looking at you. She was looking through you or past you. The system failed this child. I couldn't believe what I was seeing. I could not believe what I was seeing. And it was hard to make out what was going on with her. We went inside the house. The house was a small duplex, 800 square feet. Everything was dank, sticky, it stunk. There were animal feces everywhere. Um, German cockroaches were everywhere, everywhere. Walking across the floor was like walking on broken eggshells. You know, they were crunching under your feet. Once you walk in the room, there's a window that's broken, the screen's out of it, uh, which allows insects to come and go as they please. Walk into the room, it's semi-dark in there. I look and I see something moving at my feet and in the fetal position is a child. It's a female, she has dark, dark brown hair. You know, I picked her up and I said, well, what's your name? And she didn't speak. She had insect bites in her scalp. Her body was covered in rashes and she had a very strong odor about her. As a mom, it broke my heart. You know, I've thought about it over the years is how, how could a mother, how could a caregiver just lock their child away like that? But that seems to be what happens from the best we know. Danny can never tell us. If you isolate songbirds from other songbirds, they never learn to sing. If you isolate, and people used to do experiments like this before there was more protection for animals, if you you know, put a, a, a kitten in the dark and keep them in the dark, even though their eyes are fine, they never learn to see. So my assumption, and this is, or my hypothesis is that she never got the stimulation that she needed for her brain to develop at those important periods of development. And so while the brain looked like it was intact with the testing that um, the physicians did, she never, built those connections um, that eventually produced the thoughts and who we are and the ability to speak and those kinds of things. She had all these problems and stuff and her, her bones were sticking out, her hip bones, her collar bones, her cheekbones. You know, I'm sure you've seen the pictures where they've, you know, they're just jutting out because she was so underweight and malnourished. You know, but un luckily, you know, we know the outcome. She was adopted by the Leroy's and you know, it could not have been a better outcome for her. It was kind of a simple dream. It was like God came out of the heavens and had Danny in his hands. And he says, here, this is, I want you to take care of her for me. And that was it. She is doing excellent. She's, she's doing better than I ever expected. Because the problem that I had was I, I did have her like 24 seven, but I had other things to do and I couldn't really focus on a lot of things. Where here, they have, let's say three people on the staff, they can always watch her and make sure she does, does it right or something like that. Like when I would go out to feed the animals, I was always wondering what, what the house would look like when I came back in. She's with her own peers, which is great. And also, the folks that work here, most of them are women, and they, she's, this is the first time she's taken to women, and she's more like a girly girl, which I think is great. I have no regrets. I've, I've never had regrets with her and all that stuff. I just, like the other kids, I always figured once they're out of the house, then I can have my life. And that's what the good Lord's let me do. You know, lets me have my own life. I can go ahead and take a trip if I want to. 
you know, I can go. I went to my son's um, wedding without Danny and stuff. That was neat because I could go ahead and spend time with my son, his new wife, and then all the other family. And that was super. In the Bible, it, it says a man's not a man without a, a family and with all the d different things that go along with it. And I believe that too, you know. It, and having all the kids and now the grandkids and stuff, I'm just elated. I just love every minute of it. My best hope for Danny in the future is that you, she'll be happy and that she'll live a long life. You know, I mean, she's my baby and that's the biggest thing. You can, that's the only things you can hope for all your kids.